So we give thanks that we all woke up this morning. And we open, and we want to open our service with a few gathering songs. And today they are both Kings Day chants. If you downloaded the bulletin, it's on our website or Facebook page. There are words. Not a day survey, and Lord, hear my prayer. So take this time. This is your time to come into a place of peace, a place of stillness. We pray together, we meditate together, we listen together, and we just come to a place where we can nourish ourselves, especially with all that's going on in the world. So relax and come into your holy space.
other side, and this is what she heard on this day. My children, why condemn yourself for your seeming inadequacies, mistakes, faults, and failings? Why not, instead of dwelling on the negative in your life, turn those weaknesses into strengths and your faults and failings into virtues by allowing the positive of love to express itself in your life? Find deep within yourself real beauty, virtue, and goodness. Have faith that it is there, and you will find it when you search for it. When you refuse to see the best in yourself, and choose to dwell on all the negative within you, you must be willing to understand that you accept the consequences, for your thoughts will bring you down. As you think, so you are. Therefore, my children, think the very best. Allow the best and love to flow into you. Know that you can do anything when I, your loving Holy One, is with you. I will lead you. I will direct you. I will keep you safe. When you accept that I am within you, how could it be otherwise? You're never alone. So, our opening hymns, two hymns from an older hymnal, Be Thou My Vision and For the Beauty of the Earth. So please join us or just listen.
journalist and civic rights activist, Sidney Harris, and he wrote this oh, probably 50 years ago, but it's still true for today. The three hardest tasks in this world are neither, neither physical feats nor intellectual achievements. They are moral acts. First, to return love for hate. Think about that. To return love for hate. To include the excluded. To include the excluded. And finally, very powerful words here. I was wrong. The three hardest tasks in the world. To return love for hate, to exclude, include the excluded, and to say, I was wrong. I think that will be my mantra for this week. Okay, please come into the presence and our morning devotions, our morning prayers. Just allow them to flow in and around your heart. Know that we are heard. Oh, holy of holies, you who listens to us in times of trouble and times of joy, we call to you this day in, a, in our anxiety and our fear. We know you will not turn away from us. You are a God of infinite love and wisdom. You will comfort and restore us as we come into the center of our hearts to listen. As we come before you and quiet our weary spirits, let us, let us hear you. We ask you, O oh great creator and sustainer of life, enter into our hearts. Let not our hearts be troubled. Amen. And remembering what we haven't done and what we need to do. Oh, love, you created us. We realize that in many ways we see, and in many ways we fail to recognize you. We often fall short of your intentions for us. We desire to be generous, but we withhold from others and often from you. We desire to be like Jesus in our actions, but too often we follow the values and examples that this world offers us. We desire to be kind and loving, but we allow our fatigue and fear to deter us from these intentions. We cry out, help us, help us, help us, Holy One, and allow your grace to watch over us. 
Help us to forgive others and to open our hearts to receive forgiveness ourselves. Hear us now in the silence of these moments as we quietly offer up to you what is in our hearts. And we offer up our prayers now for all creation. And we always have a helper here, Jake. And he's coming up because he knows he will get trees. <laughs> but at Temenos, we truly believe all nature in the natural world is a reflection of the divine and is the divine. So here is Mr. Jake. Come on. Good morning, buddy. And you can see his beautiful bandana there. Oh, he's turning for a photo <laughs> We're so glad that Cynthia brings him. So, as we bless the animals and we bless the earth, we say, we think, we bring into our hearts, and we say, Hail, Mother, who art the earth. Hallowed be thy soil, rocks, and flora that nourish and support all life. Blessed be thy wind that gives us breath and thy waters that quench, bathe, and refresh all things. Blessed be all that sustains our lives here on this planet. Bless all who swim, fly, crawl, burrow, slither, and share this earth with us, all around. Holy Earth, as one heart and mind, we now praise your majesty, grace, and wonder. And we take some deep breaths, and we just allow our gratitude for this beautiful world around us. To flow outward and touch every being on this planet. Hail Mother. Hail Mother, we are thankful. And we give thanks to the Father above through the prayer that our beloved brother and son, Jesus, left us with. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on this beautiful earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, we know everything comes from you and through you. And forgive us our trespasses as we learn to forgive those who trespass against us. And please, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We await your holy presence. We open to it. We feel it flowing in and through us at this moment. And as we move deeper into contemplation, we will sing together. If you have the words, Refiner's Fire. We ask for our hearts to be purified.
prayers for community. Whatever is on your hearts, if you're watching, you can type that in the comments. I go back, and so do many other people throughout the week, and I read those comments, especially prayer requests, and I sit in silence and pray, and many other people that come here do the same thing. Feel free to type them all in now so that you're heard and so that you know somebody else is seeing and beholding what you wish. So, for our community, and this is from Richard Bohr. Oh, great love, thank you for living and loving in us and through us. May all that we do flow from our deep connection to you and all beings. Help us to become a community that vulnerably shares each other's burdens and the weight of glory. Listen now to our heart's longings for the healing of the world. So offer up now your thoughts and prayers. And we offer up prayers for all who are suffering and ill from the COVID virus, for all who are in fear of it with high anxiety and all their families. We offer up our prayers for all who are suffering, suffering in fear from the recent events, the murder of George Floyd, everything that has come up Help us all as we come to grips where we have failed each other and ourselves. Help us all to learn not to be so quick to judge each other. Everyone has different belief systems. All of us, as we talked about last week, we come in with baggage. We all have our own concerns, things that trigger us, but help us not to take it out on our siblings. Some people want to protest, some people don't. Some people want to wear a mask, some people don't. We have to see each other and we have to begin to understand. So help us, oh loving one, Help us to understand each other, to view each other with compassion and hold all in the highest light of your love. And we know that you are hearing us better than we are speaking. So we offer all these prayer to you in all the holy 10,000 names of God. Amen, Amin, Aho. So some readings for today. The first reading, and I just found this recently, it's on anger. And I thought I would read it because most of us are angry. You know, whether we're just angry that we have to stay inside, whether we're angry that this virus really turned our whole life upside down, whether we're angry at the people that are protesting, angry at brutality. We have a lot of anger. So this is honoring the anger, and I found this. This is on a blog post by Dancing Faith, who is a minister. He never shares his name. He calls it Dancing Faith, so I love this. But close your eyes if you're at him, and just take in the words. Anger. We see it in the faces of the protester claiming the streets and insisting Black Lives Matter. We see it, too, in the faces of those who push them, contain them, and sometimes brutalize them. There is so much anger over injustice. Anger over rules broken, anger over death, anger over old norms and systems assailed and failed. It is a holy, holy mess out there. It is a mess because there is destruction and even death, and the fabric of our nation is shredded. It is holy because sometimes things do need to change. Anger opens our eyes to what is wrong. Anger wakes us up and compels us to action. Anger demands that we do something. But anger almost never arises alone. It has a constant companion. That companion is grief. Grief over injustice and oppression. 
Grief over lives lost. Grief over what we have to see and learn about ourselves. And co-mingled with grief and anger, which comes up, is more pain that's piled on pain. And finally it explodes. If we can, if we are willing to truly look at where pain and anger are coming from, we will begin to be willing to address the ills. If we are willing to move into communal repentance, meaning communal changing of our ways, and if we are willing to translate this all into compassionate action and justice seeking, it can help us believe our beloved communities, to rebuild them. We rebuild our beloved communities out of this anger, out of this grief, so that there can come joy. And joy, not a shallow happiness, that glosses over the pain, but the deep joy of resilience that we know we have changed and we have addressed what needed to be addressed in our communities. The joy of justice defying injustice. The joy of reconciliation defying division. The joy of kindness defying brutality. The joy of truth defying deceit. And the joy of love defying hate. The joy that comes when we all refuse to answer evil with evil. Take that into your heart. The joy that comes when we refuse to answer evil with evil. The second reading is an excerpt from Psalm 22. And I'm using this psalm just to let you know that Everyone throughout time has suffered. And concerns we have today, many things have happened before. In this psalm, what it says in the Bible about it, it's a plea for deliverance from suffering and hostility to the leader, according to the deer of the dawn, a psalm of David. And the notation at the beginning of, psalm, of the psalm probably refers to an obscure hymn. We don't exactly know, but it's interesting. In this psalm, it speaks to the agony of someone who feels that God has totally forsaken them, and indeed many of us do. And many people are even questioning if there is a God. It is a plea for deliverance from suffering and hostility, and it's certainly appropriate for this time. We are surrounded often by hostility. So I'm just going to read two brief parts from this psalm. Allow the words to flow in and around you. See what your heart feels. The psalmist cries out now. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me with the words of my groaning? Oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night I cannot find rest. Yet, you are holy. Enthroned on the gratitude and praises of Israel, and you, our ancestors, trusted. They trusted, and we know you delivered them. To you they cried and were saved. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. But I, I am but a worm and not human, scorned by others and despised by the people. All who see me mock at me. They make mouths at me. They shake their heads. I say, commit your cause and your troubles to the Lord. And let love deliver. Let love rescue the one in whom he delights. And further down in the psalm, From the horns of the wild oxen you have rescued me, O loving one. I will tell of your name to my sisters and brothers in the midst of the congregations. I will give thanks. You who respect and seek love, praise the Holy One. All you who are offspring, glorify him. Stand in awe of her, all you children of the world. For love did not despise and abhor the affliction of the afflictions. Love did not hide love's face from us, but heard when we cried. And we are heard. And as we go into the silence of the heart, our hearts, 
we can feel that presence. So feel that presence. And on your bulletins, we will sing as the deer. So that song speaks to what we all see. We, we seek that love. We seek that comfort. And that song also asks us or reminds us what actually gives us joy. Where does our security come from? And many in our country and the world, we're seeing that it's not the things. It's not the things that we're seeking. We're seeking love. And we're seeking it deep within, and we're seeking it to be reflected out. As you can see, the psalmist, in the previous psalm I read, he was not forsaken. He was heard. We can say he was beheld. He was seen. He was held in that holy fire of vision. Beheld. Past tense of behold. In Old English, the word behold means give regard to, hold in view, to keep hold of. In the Saxons, they said it means hold, keep. Hold, possess, keep, protect, save. The application to watching and looking was an English construct, beholding. And in most cases, we use behold in conjunction with sight, to see, to look, to behold, look there. Behold, the people have seen a great light. Be, think about that, be, be, just be, don't be doing anything, be, and then hold. Maybe a higher use of this word is really 
to be, to be conscious of what we are seeing, to be present, to come into awareness every day. How do we do that? How do we be present and not have our mind going a million ways? First, we do just come to this still space and we let go of everything. We are just still. And then our eyes are opened and we hold the view of what we are feeling and what we are seeing and we hold that sight in the tenderest parts of our heart. In, sense, in a sense, when we are beholding, we are making a sacred promise. For instance, when I am looking at a flower, or right now I am looking at Jake, the dog who is sleeping over here on the floor. When I am looking at Jake, I stop. I breathe, I gaze, and I am holding his exquisite beauty, his exquisite innocence in my heart. And when I hold that, whether it's a Jake or my sister or brother, there's no way that I can move into harm with my thoughts, my words, or my actions. Today, and in the past few months and weeks, we have held so many images. We have been bombarded by social media. Many images to behold. To hold is sacred. And we've seen images of beauty, but we've also seen horrendous images of people of all ages in pain and suffering. People who are angry and hostile. And now we've all beheld countless times the horrific image of the murder of an innocent man as people stood by. So, how do we hold that image? For holding that image is windy into our psyche. Yet, we must hold it. If we are to affect change in ourselves and then change in the world. Anyone who saw the video became a sacred witness to the final moments of a beloved son, father, of a beloved man's moments. To see anybody's last moments on earth is a sacred privilege. Many of us have worked in hospice or we've sat with our relatives that are dying. It's a sacred privilege to witness that. But this privilege was horrendous. So, to behold is to hold a sacred vision and bring it into our hearts. To hold the people are seeing in sacred time. To hold it like a precious jewel we are guarding. So that murder is a precious jewel. It opened all of our hearts all around the world. And this jewel, as we polish that jewel, it is reflecting back to us some images of the human race that we need to change. Just like we look in the mirror in the morning and decide how we want to look and we change our appearance, right? Of course, it's easier to comb your hair and put on makeup or whatever we do um, than to change the image of a society that is engaged in systemic violence for a long time, systemic racism. But we are brilliant people. I don't know what the statistics are, but I was thinking about this last night. There are far more people in this world that are doing good and astoundingly loving things than what we're seeing on the news. But problem is, one, we don't get coverage, but two is, these few people that are causing all this uproar, this hatred that seems to be embedded in some people's hearts, it is a real blight on our society, and we must start cleaning up all our institutions, and first we have to start with them. In our lives, we will all have the privilege of beholding great beauty, and we all will have the privilege of beholding great horror. Both visions are ways of seeing, and both visions 
bring us into the present moment. You know the saying, Ram Das, is be here now, be here now. So be here now and hold. Keep these visions in sacred trust. When we become overwhelmed by seeing the visions of violence, go with it. Ask the loving presence to come and surround you. You know, whether you're a believer in God or whether you have a meditative practice and you don't have a name for this whatever created the universe, but go into that. Creation is powerful. Just look around. Just look around at all the beauty. So, we have witnessed, all of us have maybe witnessed babies being born, and we've witnessed loved ones dying. They're all sacred. And these images stick in our hearts our whole life, and they inform us. So for some people, they have awful images really stuck, and so maybe they continue to act out in violence. We have to help them change it. When we are present for intense moments of joy or fear, it opens up our hearts. And sometimes that's painful. Right now, I see so many people that are in angst. And, you know, I can be in angst too. One day I'm great, the next day I'm on my knees because I'm scared or I'm afraid of what's coming. But we have to hold up the vision of what we see for each other. And we have to look. We have to look at our shadow signs. You know, it's really easy to point the finger and say somebody's a racist. But if you've ever taken some encounter groups or look deeper, we all are in some ways. Now, people don't like to hear that, but we all have it. Some of that, you know, is being played out right in the, right in reality because some people are writing on Facebook and other social media, they're so, they're so mad, they're so sorry that George Floyd had to die. But they're really mad. They don't understand the looting. They don't understand the violence. Well, that's a wrong perception. And I want to say that again. That is a wrong perception. We can be dismayed at, at the violence and the looting. But the fact is, we need to be horror struck that a man was killed simply because he was black in the wrong space. That's the horror. Buildings and goods can be replaced. He will never walk on this earth again. Stomped out because somebody didn't have a heart. And that person probably was trauma informed too. You know, I'm not even going to go into that. But we can hold the sacred vision that what was important was the fact that a life was taken and people stood by. But it's also a wake-up call. It's that sacred jewel that is now reflecting back to us our own images. Where we hold hate. Where we hold violence. And we're all too eager to point the finger at others. As I was reminded this week, um, in AA and in Al-Anon, you know, there's a saying, keep your side of the street clean. Keep your side of the street clean before you go worrying and pointing fingers at others. Make sure your street's clean. Our mothers probably said, clean your own house first, right? Keep your house clean. But there's, there's very good meaning in that. When I'm busy pointing out some inadequacies I see in others, I'm not attending to my business. And we, when we all start to attend to the things that are uncomfortable in us, we will start to see change. What beholding means, what these times mean, is that we must become absolutely present to everything that's going around, on around us and to see it for what it is, not through these old lenses of perception. We must keep our glasses, we must keep our eyes clear, we must keep our hearts open, and we must cultivate discernment. Not everything is how it appears. And we can really see that if we look at social media and other things, because a lot of the images are distorted in all sorts of ways. So to get all your information from that source, hmm, probably not such good vision. So we need to become sacred witnesses 
We need to be able to stand right in the middle of chaos and we need to be able to see and open our hearts. It means coming to the calm place so then we will know if, when, and how we are called to act. Some people are called to go out and protest. Some people aren't. Some people are called to extend their hand to another person. We're all called to act in different ways. And there's absolutely no, no use in pointing fingers at people for what they do or don't do. We're all called to act in different ways. One person attending to their heart and eradicating the hostility and hidden prejudices in their heart is just as value as somebody holding a sign. We're all called to attend where we are. It means that we take responsibility for our thoughts and actions. We take responsibility of not being swayed by crowds, anger, hostility, and fear. And it requires much work to be fully present and to see clearly. And when we cannot see clearly, and we all know when we reach that breaking point, I know when I'm crossing that line into anger and hostility. And I have to take a step back. I have to pull it back. And sometimes I don't. And that's when we kind of get into trouble. But when we cannot see clearly, when our vision is only on the inadequacies and all the heart, we need to step back and we need to view from a distance until we can discern what is really holding on, what is really going on. So my friends, this week and in your lives, be absolutely aware of what you are taking in and what is going on around you. Find and cultivate your calm center, like the psalmist did. Return love for hate. Include the excluded who are all around you. And learn to say, I was wrong. Whether you get to say that out loud or admit it to yourself. Learn to admit and say, I was wrong. And when you can, to offer an apology. Or in another term, make amends. In essence, when we really start to behold, and we behold the wonders of the world, and we behold the horrors, we become humble. We become humble when we realize, one, it's not all about us. Two, two, that this world is difficult to understand, and we don't know everything. The only thing we really know is there is a way of love. However you frame it, through a spiritual or non-spiritual tradition, there is a way of love. And it's developmental stage in our human psyche. When we can develop into that stage of non-duality, and I'm not going to go into all the ramifications of that right now, but when we can go into that, to the way of love, things become clearer and we act different. That murder wouldn't have happened. When we go into the way of love, we protect each other. So many people now are fighting about masks. I have my mask right here. As soon as after service I get near people, I'll be pulling it on. Why? Because I don't know. I think it will help me keep me from infecting somebody else. I am willing to do that. And I'm not willing to make fun of people who are doing that that I may think is wrong. But we're all taking little shots at each other. I live in a town, and this morning when I was walking my dog, most people didn't have a mask on. Some did. But what was going on was everybody was giving each other dirty looks. The people with masks are mad at the people who are not wearing masks. The people not wearing masks look at disdain, look at disdain at the people wearing masks. Now, you know, I was looking at this morning, I was getting a little irritated because of one group that was giving me a look, and then I thought, Oh, Christine, you're being really childish. You know, I wear my mask. They're free to do what, they, what they're doing right now. I just cross the street. But we need to stop picking on each other, right? It's like da 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 We need to stop picking on each other. We need to look with, with good vision. Be thou my vision. Look with the vision of love. 
Cultivate that voice. And things will change. You're not going to change overnight. I wish, I wish we had some promise that all of a sudden COVID's going to go away. All of a sudden prejudice and racism is going to go away. It's not. But little by little it is. And each person has the power to affect change. For all of us that follow a way of love through a faith tradition or any tradition, that's our path in life. And sometimes we get off track. But we need to continually wipe off our lenses, right? Wipe off our lenses, see clearly, hold everything we view as sacred. We become sacred witnesses. And then, when we are called to act, we will see clearly. So, we're going to sing our last song, Grace, and then have the benediction. So take a few minutes. Just see if your lenses right now need clearing.